Good evening and welcome to the show. I am Lou Mangello. You are my friend. It is Wednesday night. It is my favorite night of the week. Right behind Taco Tuesday, um, Tostada Thursday, Freaky Friday. So it doesn't matter. Wednesday, really, I promise, is my favorite night of the week. Why, you ask? Even if you're not asking, I'm going to tell you why. You are the reason why. <clears throat> I really do look forward to Wednesdays, not because it's hump day, but because I get to see you, my friends, live in the box. If you are watching live, thank you, welcome, tag, share, invite a friend, get comfortable, get on the couch, grab a snack, taco flavored Doritos, one of my favorites, by the way, and join us live in the box. I can no longer do this without my glasses. It is so good, as always, to see so many familiar names and faces, little tiny faces. That's all I can see in the box. <clears throat> Florida's going to need me, get me some warm weather next week, says Melanie Jones. Listen, the uh, the weather is, the weather outside is frightfully hot because it's February in Florida. Why shouldn't it be 97 degrees? But it is, who cares? There's no snow. It's just, we're like hours, and by hours I mean seven days away from the start of the Flower and Garden Festival. Thanks to all of you who watched. You hung in there for a long time today. We were going for a long time from the sneak peek of the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival of the Arts and Food and Wine. They should just combine them all into one long festival. Just make it the Epcot Festival Park and just have at it all year long. Leave the kiosks up. Just all, and then leave some of our favorites like the taiyaki in Japan, everything almost in China, but they need the strawberries in there too because they're on a little stick and they're candied and they're delicious and they're healthy. I have lists. I have many, many lists of things that need to be in um, uh, in Epcot along the food uh, lines. Corey Bassett, always good to see you, my friend. I saw you sent me an email or a message. I'm stupid far behind, but I promise. Oh, I just have to write myself a note because I saw some writing. She's like, did you ever get my email? Uh, what, what's her name? I don't remember. I, <laughs> okay, I know what that means. Um, anyway, Aaron Van Quill. Good to see you, Luis Ramos, who sends me lots of food pictures all the time. Um, it's sort of like payback for all this. Marla Chan, by the way, love Marla Chan, who's saying hi to Donnie and Marie. I think you mean the Nicholsons and probably not the Osmonds or both. Either way, uh, Chris Bannis, Jim Orahosky. we got lots of good stuff to cover tonight, as well as anything that you guys want to call in and share as well. Um. Again, I did do a live video today from a preview. It wasn't out on the promenade, but it was a preview of the Flower and Garden Festival. I really like uh, a couple of things I'm trying. Although I did miss many things inside because I was live and I was online, and I you tr you didn't want to you don't want to see me eat. You normally don't want to see me. Eat. Maybe you do. You shouldn't. Today you didn't. Uh, Beatrice Dennis, wow, long time listener, first time caller. She's neither calling nor is she a first timer. She calls all the time. Liz Meeks, how do I love the Meekses individually and collectively? You know who my favorite is. Um, I owe Brett another um, uh, another response to his email. And are you guys coming for Star Wars? Let me know if you guys are coming out for um, Star Wars too. Uh, Kyle Loomis, good to see you. Wow, so many. Um, what was it called? The yes, Aaron Van Quill. I missed the Impossible Meatball. On like the Kefka thing, like how did I miss what every single person said was their favorite thing? So, um, Jenna Lai says, hey everyone, I'm here from the future. It's Thursday in Japan. I like everything about that sentence because I'm loving the fact that you are in Japan. I cannot wait to go to Japan. Um, let me make this bigger so everybody can see it. Uh, where in Japan are you? Why are you there? And what's the best thing that you've eaten? Darlene Nagy, what was my favorite food for? I really didn't get a chance to try a lot. Okay, so you will be for Star Wars. Sweet. Are you bringing my favorite one? I mean, are you bringing the little one? Darn it, I almost gave it away. Um, John Jones is coming. Finally, John Jones, I'm going to meet you, hopefully, um, next week. Hopefully, your trip um, does not get canceled. I know you had to postpone 
a couple of times. I have five boxes of chocolate-covered grams in my suitcase. It's like she's saying that, like she's smuggling it across the border. Like, I've got five boxes of grams in my suitcase. Just, keep, just can you just, can you, would you mind holding for me? Um, is there a, um, is there a limit to how many boxes of chocolate-covered grams you're allowed to actually bring uh, across state lines? Uh, but yeah, we have other stuff that I want to talk about today because this past week I was able to experience not one, but two, count them, two different things that I have never done before. Uh, and each of them was interesting in their own way. Let me just get any other. Uh, Becky Trainer. Wait a minute. I'm going to get this right because I'm Italian. And if I don't, I'm going to be excommunicated. Becky Trainer Abruzzetti. Abruzzetti. There's so many double letters in there. It's like bookkeeper. Abruzzetti. Close. Becky, you look so familiar, and I don't know why. But anyway, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, make yourself comfortable. Grab a snack. Say hi to everybody. 99.9% of the people in the box are very, very, very nice. There's one or two, but I'm kidding. It's 100%. Everybody's so nice here. Um, I'm just eating food. I've had some amazing ramen and sushi. We went to a place that cooks in the steam. What? That cooks in the steam baths in Japan. So I'm assuming that you don't mean that they that you're actually not wait. I think this is where appropriate commas are important. They cook in the steam they they're not cooking in your steam bath, but you're in a steam bath and they're cooking around you. I'm both frightened and intrigued all at the same time. Um because I don't think I want to be cooked along with my food. Keith Groshans, the most talented, busiest uh graphic designer. On the planet, by the way. Uh, Jim Hart just missed you today. Left to come back home. Well, out there planning on next trip now. Sorry that I missed you. One more week to King Cake. Uh, I, again, I'm more of a... Um, uh, I'm more of a Cajun Kringle kind of guy. But that's not to say that I will not... Um, I will not get a King Cake. Because I need to. So, by the way, if you're watching live, tag, invite... Share with a friend wherever it is that you are watching. Jimmy Kenny, uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Yes, but I'm waiting. I'm, I need to sort of have my Spider-Verse movie moment this weekend. If you have not seen or downloaded Into the Spider-Verse yet, I wish I had an affiliate link. Go get it. Go watch it. It's awesome. It's awesome. And Liz Meeks, tell Matt, anytime he wants to come over and watch Spider-Verse, look, I got comic books and it will have so much fun. I mean, I'm going to give the kid lots of snacks, but we will have a great time. And he's welcome here anytime. Um, I cook ramen every time I take a bath. Oh, it's so, that's so creepy and weird and not sounding. They put a basket of crab, fish, corn, potatoes, etc., into a hole that's steamed from the natural onsen's steam bath. Then you pull it out and eat it. Now we're talking. Now we're like, now we're literally cooking with, we were talking about my language and now I want ramen. And this might be a, this might be a Japanese, God, uh, we're going for Japanese food at some point in the next few days because now that's what I'm thinking about. So I like that. And if you could actually take a steam bath while they're cooking your food and then eat it there, um, that would be nice. That would be very, very nice. Uh, Christopher Stank, hello from Massachusetts. Mary Urquhart is from Michigan. Two places, by the way, where I'm sure it's colder than it is here. He loves smack, snacks, it's not snacks, smacks, snacks, especially with his buddy. Um, and he could have snacks with me, too. So I think I'm his buddy. I'm not sure if it's reciprocal, but just let him know. Look, there's all kinds of little comic books and stuff. He would have some. I mean, he can't touch anything in the office, but he can come and look. There's a glass partition that he can sort of look through. Um, Tacey Atkins says, thank you for having the retreat the last weekend of Flower and Garden. Even more excited now. Wait a minute. So Tacey Atkinson, who, by the way, I love for so many reasons, not the least of which is she's Canadian, so she's so nice. Uh, yeah, so the Momentum Weekend Retreat is going to be May 31st through June 3rd. Uh, I have released tickets for past attendees and for folks in the nation. And then I believe probably, well, maybe I'll even do it tomorrow. Maybe I'll release tickets. Maybe I'll release them for you guys. So there's only 10 people that can come to the retreat. And I think we've sold four. I think we've sold five, actually, seats so far. It is so much. It's it's a deep dive. It is a great productive weekend, which just happens to be 
in a 13, I think this one's 13 bedroom vacation home near Walt Disney World. We, I take care of all the arrangements. So you get your own bedroom. I take care of all the food. There's a pool. There's games. But we also very much focus on you and your business. So if you go to lumangelo.com, you can find out there. And, um, yeah, I think there's only four or five spots left. Uh, if you're serious about your business, whether you're just getting started or you have a blog or a podcast or video or a brick-and-mortar business, ask Taste. I won't say anything about it. Ask Tasty Atkinson um, what she thinks. There you go. Um, actually, you should ask Crystal. You should ask her daughter Crystal Steer what she thinks. That actually there's a few people, I think, in, the, in here. Uh, Lisa was here last year. Keith, uh, no, let me see who else. Oh, I'm scrolling. I'm trying to do two things all at once. I am so bad at the multitasking. Um, and I'm under-caffeinated, too. So, Chris Nails, how are you? Uh, awesome, just new take on Spider-Man, Spider-Verse movie, hoping for a sequel. So, Damien, I think they're not only going to make a sequel. There's talks that they're going to sort of break off like a, 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 do a, and do a Spider-Gwen one. I would love to see Spider-Man Noir, actually, which I dig. Oh, sir, very much. So, um, I feel like if Lou takes care of the food, you either eat like a king or you starve. Uh, David, we had a lot of food last year. Uh, we had food like just in the house all the time, and then we had other food catered for some of the other meals. It was um, it was a blast. It was a blast. But more importantly, it was a very productive weekend. Really moved the needle, I think, for some folks who were there. Uh, I'm quickly scrolling through to try and see who else might have been there. Um, I don't know. Paul Clark, good to see you. Um, so Jimmy Kenny's asking, what was the Star Wars tour that you that you whoops that I teased earlier? Well, that's actually the first thing I want to talk about and sort of give a live mini review because I'm going to save the food stuff for later. Um, so yeah, so this week I was invited to experience the Star Wars guided tour, which. Honestly, was not something ever on my radar. I kind of forgot that uh, it was even available over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now, I want to be clear, a couple of different things. One, I was invited to experience this tour by Disney in the interest of full disclosure, so hashtag hosted. Um, but if this is not something where – I know when I post their photo in the morning, people were like, oh, you're going to see Galaxy's Edge. This is not, it's nothing to do with Galaxy's Edge. This is a – Six, six and a half hour tour through all of the Star Wars experiences and then a little, a couple little extras that you could have at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So uh, the normal price is $99. There is a special going on right now. There's 15% off. Spoiler alert, alert, I will tell you, it is a, for the amount of time and the stuff that you do, plus a meal is included as well. I think it's a great value. But I want to sort of tell you a little bit about what the tour entails, what my experience was like, and then you guys can decide on your own and see if this is something that you are interested. Donald, it's not Spaceballs the tour. It's Star Wars the tour. But think of this as sort of VIP access to all of the Star Wars experiences at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So what happens is what the first thing you need to do is obviously register in advance. This is not something that you could walk up and do. And when you do... They're at, you're asked, what side do you consider yourself on? Are you like a light side guy or gal, or are you a dark side? Are you a first order? Are you a resistance? That is actually important, and I'll show you why with this little thing that's hidden off camera. So um, you start off, you check at 8 o'clock, you get one of those little earpieces. You have two. We had wonderful guides, by the way. We had two very wonderful guides. Uh, who, before we even got started, gave us a really neat and very interesting, and I actually there was some things on this, uh, there was a lot of things on this tour that I didn't know in terms of trivia and history, but they, our two guides gave us a history of not just Star Wars in Disney's Hollywood Studios, but the relationship between George Lucas and Lucasfilm and Disney and how these experiences and attractions eventually came to be. Now, in terms of what you get to see and do um, in, in no sort of real particular order. You get a screening of the Star Wars Path of the Jedi, which normally would have been closed. So the day that we went, Path of the Jedi would have been closed because I believe it's now 
a seasonal attraction. So that is where the uh, Drew Carey Sounds Dangerous and formerly Monster Sound Show used to take place. You also get to see the two live stage shows. So it's Star Wars A Galaxy Far, Far Away and the March of the First Order from a reserved viewing area. I posted a video of the March of the First Order show. When I tell you that I would, excuse me, we were front and center like we were dead front and center. There was nobody in front of me because I wouldn't have been able to see because height. Um, so you get reserved area for those two. If you have any um, younglings, which is what they call kids between, I believe, ages four and 12, they can participate in the Jedi Training Academy. Uh, sorry, it's not an academy. It's Jedi Training Trials of the Temple where they get a guaranteed spot. And if you have little younger kids, that's important because otherwise you have to get to the studios very early and register your child for one of the certain, one of the the times that the uh, trials of the temple goes on. Your kid is guaranteed a spot. I tried to sneak in because I make the height requirement, but I lost it with the age requirement. I think my scruff is what gave it away. You also get to experience Star Tours. The adventure continues. Mind you, anything that we get to do, there were no lines for, right? So we walked on to Star Tours. The adventures continue. Uh, and actually, when we did it, um, we had done it early on, so there was nobody in the queue at all. We were actually able to stop. They were able to turn off the background sounds and music, talk a little bit about some of the trivia. They showed a few very cool little Easter eggs in the queue as well. And then... This is a spoiler alert. Before you actually board your star speeder, they take you onto um, uh, sort of the the entry bridge with the lights on. So you get a sense of just what that room looks like, what some of the mechanics look like that move and articulate this very large 40-person star speeder. It's actually fascinating to see it um, in person. From there... um, Again, my timing might be off. So, yeah, I think from there we went to lunch. Yay! Which is one of my favorite parts uh, over at Backlot Express. And the way it works is in the morning you're given a menu and you're able to choose any of the items. The menu has recently changed. So I tried the Cuban sandwich. There's also a chicken, like a spicy chicken and biscuits. There's a new salad, but salad. Um, And... Again, I don't want to spoil too much, but you do get a special surprise dessert while you're there. Um, the Star Wars themed menu is no longer there. So we used to have like the Galactic Burger or some, I don't remember what it was called. It was like the Black Bun Hamburger. Those Star Wars themed items are gone. Um, you also get some special visitors while you're at, um, um, while you're at lunch. So you get a little special character experience there. I'm not sure if I, I think I did post a photo from there. But you also get some cool stuff while you're there, too. So at your place, you will get one of these neat little certificates. This supposedly in Arabesh says Lou. It looks kind of like Lou. It says that um, I'm a friend to C-3PO. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, and it also gives you the name, that your date and the names of your tour guides. You also get this oh-so-cool Darth Vader lightsaber handle mug for all of your beverage needs and and this is why where your choice is made in terms of first order or resistance you also get a name badge so i because i'm a good guy i chose the resistance but because i have a friend there who knew that i have two children he's like hey man you could have my badge too so I have one of these and one of these. I just haven't, I haven't given it to my kids as yet. They both say the same thing on them. If you know your Arbesh, you can figure it out or take a screenshot and see for yourself. Um, so we had a pretty nice long lunch there. We walked over to Walt Disney Presents, saw the models of Galaxy's Edge, spent a little bit of time there talking about what is coming. Um, she didn't give anything that was earth-shaking, not common knowledge, but talked a lot more in detail about what some of those experiences are going to be like. From there, we went over and uh, did some characters. So we went over to um, 
Star Wars launch bay and saw the props and the concept art and some of the artifacts from Star Wars. Again, here they gave some really, really, co- really, really cool backstory and details. One thing I didn't know, which I think was awesome, is that if you go near where the character meet and greet experiences are, there is a a costume of Ray, and then there's Ray's vehicle from um, from the film. The whole thing was 3D printed. 3D. I was going to do like my Muppet bit. It was 3D printed, which is very, very cool because it's incredibly detailed. While you're there, you also get to do not one, not two, but count them three different character experiences. So I got to meet Chewbacca, who, by the way, is a bit of a hugger. He's a tall fellow. So it was like Chewbacca, little Ewok, insert caption here. Uh, We met Kylo Ren. Just a word of warning. He has no sense of humor. Like, nothing. Stone face, not a hugger. Not, does not like to be touched in any way, shape, or form. I learned from experience the hard way. He is not, he's neither warm nor fuzzy. There's no cuddling Kylo Ren at all. However, BB-8, who's just a couple little, like, balls on top of each other, he, in a way, he, you can go and hug him. I'm not saying that I did, but maybe, maybe I did. Um, at night, you also, um, you can, so the, the, the tour lasts about six hours. <clears throat> and then at night, you have a reserved viewing area for Star Wars, a galactic, wait, Star Wars, a galactic spectacular, nighttime fireworks, spectacular fireworks, spectacular event. Um, you also get some other cool souvenirs you get to take home. I'm not going to spoil those for you. Um, you do not get um, you do not get the dessert party, but you can add on the dessert party if you want. Um, one of the other things that they don't tell you that I have to share because I think I posted a picture of it anyway is as you are going to see the um, the March of the First Order stage show. You actually get to march along with the first order. So the first order comes out from backstage and we all lined up behind them. That was pretty cool. That was actually pretty neat, um, being able to. And I think I posted the video of that in the box people group and on the Facebook page. Um, uh, so they don't tell you about some of the surprises. They don't tell you about some of the giveaways. They don't tell you about the march. Um, as a whole, and I want to know if anybody here has done it. If you have and have any thoughts, I'll I'll read them here, or if you want to call in, let me know. I'll open up the phone line for you. Um, Be very clear. Um, This is a great tour for the beginning or sort of more hardcore Star Wars fan because you literally get to do everything um, that that is Star Wars related in the studios. So Vronik says, why wouldn't you just add the dessert party? It seems like a must. I, I agree. If you're going to stay for the fireworks and you're already sort of invest, I would absolutely add on the the firework dessert party. Um, If you're a dessert person and will get the value from it, Um, there's nothing behind the scenes. So you don't go to Galaxy's Edge. You don't go into Galaxy's Edge. You see the model. You talk to them about it. And they're very, very well versed in terms of what is coming and some of the details and things to look out for. The guides were wonderful. They were fun. They were funny. They were very punny throughout the entire time, but they had great trivia to share. Uh, If you like the Star Wars shows, you have literally the best spots for every single show. You're front and center, no lines, no waiting. And actually, there's no waiting anywhere. There's no waiting for lunch. There's no waiting for characters. There's no waiting for attractions. There's no waiting for photos. Um, It literally is like having a private VIP tour guide for you and it, and our group was very small. Um, there was maybe 20 of us in the group. Um, you also, when you're in Launch Bay, they show you a lot of very, very cool little bits of trivia and Easter eggs and details that you might probably not have seen otherwise. Um, I do agree with whoever said that about the, um, uh, the dessert party. Um, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to add that, I'm trying to read some of the comments very quickly. So, um, do they say, so the really, there was a little bit of talk about the hotel, but nothing more, 
uh, in terms of giving away any more information than was not already publicly available. Uh, I saw somebody said about the price. It's normally $99, which I think is actually considering how long it is uh, and your lunch is included. So you got to figure your lunch alone with the dessert and stuff like that would probably cost you 20 bucks easy. So if the tour is $100, there's now 15% off. I mean, it really is not a lot for as long as you are going throughout the day. So uh, I think it's, I had a great time. I thought it was a great value. Again, even being a, a somewhat Star Wars nerd, knowing a lot of the things, if you are a Star Wars fan or you're going to the parks, or this I actually think this is a really nice gift to give somebody. So say you're going with your family and your husband and your son are big Star Wars fans, this is a cool thing for them to do together. So they make sure they experience everything with no weights, with that sense of VIP access. You get some cool takeaways from it. Again, so if you wanted to buy the mug alone, I think the mug is probably $16. If you wanted to buy your name badge in Arabesh, um, that's probably another. So I think it's a really good value, um, whether you are... And I think even if you're you're even more so if you're not a super duper Star Wars fan, it is uh, I think it's a lot of fun. John Jones says he's thinking about it. Uh, Jerry says Lou sent you telling him Lou sent you won't do anything. I know so many families that go to studios just for Star Wars stuff for the kids. Pricey, but can see it happening, appealing to them. Um, so, yeah, so kids not only get so they get training academy. So it's not called tra- training academy anymore. It's now called the um, the Trials of the Temple, and they have a guaranteed spot in the Trials of the Temple. So you don't have to worry about getting there, crack of dawn, to register them and try and get the right time that doesn't you know conflict with lunch. Your kids are guaranteed a spot at Trials of the Temple if they go. So that's pretty neat, too. Um, so Martin says, it sounds like it's a good value for the money. Yeah, I mean, look, if you have a family of six... It's a different story, right? It's a, it's a lot more when you're looking at that um, at that many people. Uh, is the tour ECV friendly? Yes, we had two people who were in ECVs. Um, it was no problem at all. Obviously, for Star Tours, you'll need to be able to get out from the ECV. But there were a couple of, I think one of them didn't ride, so they stayed with one of the guides. Um, I think they were, I think they waited inside. Uh, Tatooine trade. I was going to call it Endor Vendors again, but I think they waited Tatooine traders for us. So, my husband loves his Star Wars name badge. Uh, it's cool. Is it ECB friendly? Let me go back. Was that Darth Metal? Um, yeah, so it was cool. Um, it was cool. I, I had a lot, again, I had a lot of fun. I, when I first went into it, I'm like, well, I, I think I probably know all this. I've seen it all already. But I did. I had a blast. And again, for how long it was, if this was a two-hour tour, it would be a different story. But uh, for those of you who said that you have um, uh, Star Wars fans in your family, I think there's something really neat to do. I think this, And I think this will be um, a cool, almost surprise gift if you wanted to send, you know, like I said, your wife and daughter, husband and son, whatever, mix and match, however you want. Uh, it's a neat thing for people to do together uh, speaking of doing things together because obviously i think disney as much as i enjoy going solo and i have a top 10 reasons to go to walt Disney world solo show back in there somewhere some of these things are best enjoyed when they're done with friends and that very very much was the case this past week because john jones you know this new orleans has mardi gras venice has Carnivale. I've never been to either of them, but I've experienced them in some way, shape, or form and derivations of such in Walt Disney World. Well, at Maria and Enzo's in Disney Springs from February 22nd through March 5th, they celebrate Carnivale at the restaurant. Uh, Again, I was an invited guest by Maria and Enzo's and the Patina Group to experience Carnivale, which I believe this is the first... I believe this is the first year. Maybe they did it last year. They might have done it last year. But so so Carnivale, again, is sort of using that analogy of, of Mardi Gras, is a celebration of the costumes and the culinary. And um, it's just an excuse to have a party. And well, actually, there's a reason why. So there's a reason why 
Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, is celebrated, which is very much in alignment with the reason why Carnivale is celebrated. Because the word Carnivale, which ended up being the English translation of the word Carnival, Carnival, comes from two Latin words, which mean meat and remove. You take away the meat. Why? Because the beginning, this this celebration, like um, uh, like Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, leads up to the beginning of Lent, when traditionally uh, Catholics will remove meat from your diet, um, especially on on Fridays. No meat, which is obviously it's like Sundays with Chick Fil A. You want meat on Friday because you can't have meat on Friday. So um, I was going with Deanna. Um, I put it out there in the in the box people group that we were growing, and uh, our party of two ended up being a party of about fourteen, which was awesome. Um, we sat at two tables uh, inside Marie and Enzo's, which normally is a beautiful venue in and of itself, but it was decorated with balloons and there were masks and beads on the table. Um, there was entertainment throughout the night. So while we were there, there were um, singers, jugglers, stilt walkers, mime, excuse me, mimes, face painters. Um, there were three uh, folk dancers as well. There was also a mask artist. So if you if you went if you go back and watch my live video from Tuesday night, Monday night, whatever I don't even know it, it's Monday night because last night was Tuesday. If you watch the video from Monday night, you'll see I gave a quick tour, and not only were there um, face painters and hand painters walking around, but there was a Venetian mask artist off to the side. And he had a wide variety of different colored masks that he was hand accenting for you. You got to choose your mask and the colors, and they're free. What? Dare I say, because you don't hear that word a lot in Disney World, it was free and included. Of course, I had to get one. So I chose – I'm not going to put it on. I'm, I'll put it on. Who cares? So I chose this one because it's blue. So for WW Radio, and then he painted all the little accents on here. I was really surprised that um, um, it was not an additional charge, but he was a very, very nice guy, very engaging with everybody. Um, we sat down, and one of the things I noticed right off the bat is, unlike a normal Italian meal, where it's very loud and everybody's yelling at each other, and sometimes people get up and they storm off the table. I'm not saying this is how I experienced it in my childhood, but um, even as the entertainment was going on, the venue was not so loud, so much so that you couldn't hear and talk to the people across the table. So it was a very, while it was a very um, uh, energetic and fun environment, it wasn't so loud that you couldn't talk to each other. And I really, really appreciated that because as much as I wanted to enjoy um, the entertainment that was there, and the, by the way, the the singer, who you may or may not recognize, one of the, the, the singer who was there and the that sort of minstrel trio was phenomenal. Like, he had such a wonderful voice. He didn't just sing from up on the second level, but he walked around, he engaged everybody, he sang to some of the ladies at the table. Um, it was really, really a blast. But I hear what you're saying. You're like, Mangello, that's great, but let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about the menu. So the way Carnivale works at um, Maria Enzo's is actually very interesting because you can really go one of two ways. So I actually took one of the menus with me. Um, you can actually do it either by choosing a, a prefix menu or I have to sort of back this up enough so you can see. You can choose an option from the very, very extensive menu. This is just the food. <laughs> This is all the, the beverages. So wait a minute. I have to really back up. So this is obviously the very, 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 very extensive list of classic cocktails, sangrias, martinis, uh, proseccos, seasonal cocktails, the Carnivale menu, um, as well as drinks. And the one thing that we noticed at the table, and we'll get to this even more when we talk about the menu, was the price of the cocktails all ranged from $5 to $8. So sometimes you go to restaurants, especially during special events, and cocktails will be anywhere from $12 to $16. The cocktails here will all run 
$8 or so. Some of the classic cocktails ranged about 12 to 14 for some of the martinis. But the Carnivale special cocktail, so there was a Red Rita, a Joy and Fun, an exotic Le Blanc, Cachaca, I don't know what any of those words mean, uh, a Green Mistake, a Peroni, and there was a, a Fernet Refresher. The Joy and Fun with the Belvedere Vodka, vodka lemon, lemon, Lemoncello, not Lumoncello, and Tuaca, I don't know what that is either, were very popular with some of the ladies um, at my table. Um, but so... What we ended up doing, or what a number of us ended up doing, was ordering the Feast of Carnivale. So I'll show you what it is here, so you can read along at home. So what this basically includes is an amouge bouche, which uh, there's also the ciabatta, um, the grissini, which are breadsticks, uh, focaccia, a really wonderful focaccia bread, which was so delicious. You dip it in the olive oil with a little bit of pepper, it's spectacular. There is a, the pasta de carnavale is a chef selection of pasta. There, and there was, um, uh, an antipasti, uh, a secondi. So you have an, uh, an appetizer, an entree, and then the, um, the uh, bougie de, de carnavale is a, um, a lightly fried pastry dough. So this was $45 per person, which you get basically five courses. So five divided, not, which works out to like under $10 a course. I will tell you that there was a lot of food there. And if you look at some of the prices of other items on the menu. So, for example, if you were to order the the um, Parmesan crushed flour, which I know um, Deanna, I think Lisa. Bush, so that's $34 just by itself. Right. The Osobuco which is the braised veal shank, which I wanted to order, but I went with something else. That's $39 just itself. So at $45, you're already ahead of the game, especially if you eat a lot of bread like I do. Um, so that's what I went with. Some people did um, some people did a la carte, which I, I like the fact that you're not locked in one way or um, the other. Um, I really enjoyed the food. I actually really liked the chef um, selection of pasta, and I love the fact that it was cooked perfectly. So, coming from an Italian family, um, I'm I'm very um, not particular because look at me, I eat anything. But I, I do like my um, pasta cooked the right way. I, there's a certain way that I like the sauce. That's one of the things I liked about Maria. And if you ever listen to our live dining review of the restaurant, the four of us who were there, all of whom have. Some uh, Italian background. So Panda was there. Um, I was there. My wife and um, oh my god, I'm trying to remember who else was there. Uh, it'll come back to me. It was so long ago. But um, we really re- enjoyed the food. Again, the, the 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 other thing I wanted to make sure of, having been there in the past, was that the portion sizes wouldn't be different if you did the feast and they weren't. So I had the pasticcio which is, it's almost like, it feels like it weighs 11 pounds. It's it's almost like a baked lasagna, but it it has three or four different types of pastas in there, as well as sausage, eggplants, um, three or four different types of cheese. It It's a Italian comfort food, and the pasta, the, the portion size from that is exactly the same as it was if you were to order off the menu. So we were there. We got there. Our reservation was from for 7.30. We didn't get out of there until almost 11.30. So we were there for almost four hours. Um, $45 for food that would cost you more. All the entertainment. So we got the mask. There were other little things on the table. Um, you could obviously order. We ordered coffee and some other uh, whatnot um, afterward as well. I really enjoyed it, and it very much is attributable not just to the food, but the atmosphere. Certainly, the company makes it. So this was something. So Carnavale, I think, is something that is is wonderful to do if you go as a couple or a couple of friends. I think it's even more enjoyable if you were to go with a group of people having four, six, eight. I think we squeezed like 10 people at our table. Um we we had a really really nice time, um, and again I'm I'm grateful to the to the Patina Group people for inviting us. Go check out the live video because it's hard for me to explain 
the entertainment, the the live singers and the jugglers and the dancers and what the atmosphere was like without it being intrusive into a meal, right? So you go some places where um, it's so loud inside, it's hard to have a conversation or you're yelling over each other or when the live entertainment starts, it's nearly impossible um, uh, to to talk to one another. That was not the case here, and I was very cognizant of that and, and very appreciative of it. So um, I, I think it's a great way to spend an evening. Plus, if you make a reservation early enough, you can go out, walk over to the Edison right next door, go have a cocktail outside at the boathouse or a second dinner, however it is um, that you like it. Carnivale right now goes until March 5th, but even if you can't get down here by then, I'm sure it'll be back next year. So think about when, you know, sort of the the, the pre-Lenten Mardi Gras type time is late February or early March is usually when that is. Um, again, I, I felt at $45, and again, in the interest of full disclosure, I was an invited guest, but... At forty-five dollars for ninety dollars for the two of us, um, I, I would have been happy to pay it um, uh, and and have the exact same reaction to it. So, uh, if anybody else has been there, anything else to share? If you've been to Carnivale, I would love to know your thoughts on it. Um, I know that I'm not sure if I think I saw Joseph Jowdy in here, um, who was at our table. I, I'm reading what some of you guys were eating while we were doing that and um i was so slim before i found this podcast oh before i found this podcast bloke called lou martin if you think you're chubby now where do you go to japan so uh tony yes 45 dollars for a five course meal at disney um i I agree man um I, i i was when i saw that i ordered it i was concerned that they were going to be half portions smaller portions and there weren't like i didn't finish everything and i left full so um uh, and, and the other thing you know you can obviously add on too so we also added on a um because i wanted two of the entrees it's not like the cruise it's so frustrating because you like you go on a cruise and you want to order or i do order like Three appetizers, two entrees. You can't do that here, but I did order an eggplant parmesan for the table, which was phenomenal. And just so you know, if you go there and order the um, the, the chicken parmesan, it it's like this big. It's no joke. It's easily, easily shareable for two people. And if you're little people, maybe even three people, or just one of me, it's the chicken parmesan is excellent there. Uh, it is really, really good. So I think that as a whole... The Patina Group has done an, a remarkable job with the Edison, Enzo's Hideaway. I love the atmosphere. I dig the food. We have done Sunday supper there. We've had birthdays there. We've had dinner there. I really like that a lot. And um, Marie, so you, Marie and Enzo's all give you three different types of experiences uh, with different types of food. And um, yeah, I think they do a great job. And when the Edison comes back and starts doing those um, themed events, those are definitely something to check out if you haven't been. Uh, Brett Bowen is leaving Friday on the dream. I am happy for you, yet jealous at the exact same time because I love, love cruising. Uh, Paul Clark says, I believe that Marie and Enzo's, I believe this is true, Paul Clark. Marie and Enzo's offers a a 40% DVC discount at lunch. Uh, try that out next visit. That sounds like an, an awesome idea. Sophie Kravitz loves the eggplant parmesan, as did I. Um, even even though I had to share it. So all that matters is is the food. So the food is. And whenever somebody talks about moving to Florida, right? Especially so, even when I was broadcasting live today, one of the cast members was from Brooklyn. We were talking about the difference in food from here. It sometimes is tough being Italian from the Northeast to find good Italian food here. I think that Maria Enzo's and Il Molino are probably, and, and the pizza. So here are the, okay, so here's my top three. Il Molino, the Swan and Dolphin, Maria, this is in no particular order, Il Molino, Maria Enzo's, and the pizza at uh, Via Napoli uh, as a, uh, is tied with the food at Tutagusto Wine Bar, where Becky and I had a lovely meal. Like, we were laughing, we didn't fight, and we had delicious food. So if you want good Italian food, those are the three places to go. And 
the fact that they happen to be Disney in Disney is no coincidence because I've eaten at a lot of other Italian restaurants around here. And I think that's actually some of the best food. It's the water. It's absolutely the water. So, uh, yeah, so Carnivale was a good time. I would love to do it again um, next year. So we'll all go. We need a table for 40, please. How many we got in the box tonight? We need a table for 127. We'll just we'll just make one big reservation and and take over the holy uh, the whole restaurant. Julie Tran Diley says, "I love Il Molino and Vianopoli. I We love Julie Diley from the Little Kitchen. It was so nice to see you today, and your lovely heart shaped glasses. At um, even though you cut in line in front of me, at, uh, I'm kidding. She didn't cut. In line. Yeah, she did. She cut in line. Um, it was a lot of fun. You still haven't gone to Maria Enzo's yet. If you need a dining buddy, this guy, this guy." I'll, I'll even wear the mask. You wear your, your funky hard glasses, and I'll wear my funky Carnivale mask. So, uh, loves the pizza, Il Molino. I haven't been to Il Molino in a while. I think Swan and Dolphin um, have arguably, overall, some of, if not the best restaurants in a single location in anywhere in Walt Disney World. I'll, now, that means like at a hotel. I'm not, Disney Springs, it's a separate animal, but... If you go to Swan and Dolphin, because I'll put them together, you've got Il Molino, you've got Kimono's, which has some of the best sushi you'll find, and karaoke, not my bag, baby, but karaoke. You know how I feel about Todd English's Blue Zoo. The Miso Glazed Miro and the Cantonese Lobster are like, they're, they're sitting on my shoulders fighting to see which one is better. The thing is, you go with somebody and you get them both and you share them because they're both delicious. Um... I even think that um, the Fountain is a great place to go for lunch. And Shula's, although I have not been since the refurbish, I need to do a live. Who can I find to do a live dining review with me at Shula's? I don't. Nobody wants to do these with me. I'll find somebody. Uh, Shula's has recently got, undergone a refurbishment. And I, while I can't do the big 48-ouncer um, it, in the past, and I, not just here, but but elsewhere, I think Shula's is is one of the best steakhouses you'll find anywhere. I like Shula's better than I like Ruth's, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. So, and Ruth Chris was pretty darn good. So, um, see, Paul Clark likes the fountain. Um, let's see. Marla Chan says, one day Blue Zoo need peeps. I'm your peep. I, us at Blue Zoo with Cantonese lobster. Oh, the fun and festivities we would have at Marla Chan. We'll have to make that happen. Let me know when you're coming. We'll make a reservation and go one night. Oh, let's do girls' night. Me, you, all the girls will get together and go to Blues. We'll have cocktails. It'll be like um, um, like Sex in the City, like with Miranda. We'll have Martini. Oh, it'll be so much fun. They have all little, like, foamy, bubbly drinks. And, yeah, we'll have a good time. Girls' night at Blues. And I'm only saying that to you because you got to stay home and watch the kids while I go out for girls' night at Blues. So... Um, oh, Jamie Williams at Crazy Bloody Marys at Finn's on Sundays in the lobby. How have I not done that in a long... Wow, good Gandhi. That's a good time. If you like Bloody Marys, Finn's on Sundays is a... Uh, that's a good time right there. I've only been able to sample them not on a Sunday, but I think we did a live... We did a live show there one night. I'm sure we did. I just don't remember... Uh, am I invited to Blue Zoo? Said Terry Simpson. You have to ask who I'm. I'm just inviting myself to Girls' Night, basically. So whoever's in charge of that, as long as you don't wear the dinosaur costume, I am sure that you'll be allowed to go. So Jim Hart says we get the Mezzo Metro every time. Did they bring the bubblegum martinis back? I don't know if they did, but we can go and find out. Um, you fly. Uh, well, actually, no. I'll fly you by. I don't know how. I'm just trying to get you to buy dinner at Blue Zoo, but I would be happy to join you. It would be a lovely, lovely meal. Um, Tom Moore says, hey, man, we check in on St. Patrick's Day. Which is better to go that day? Gel Disney Springs or Jelly Rolls? Um, so obviously, if you're thinking Disney Springs, you're you're thinking Raglan Road. Um I mean, look, if you're going to go celebrate St. Patrick's Day, there's no better place to do it than in Raglan Road. Um, I'm actually going to be there in a couple of weeks. It won't be on St. Patrick's Day. Will it be on St. Patrick's It might be. I'm not sure. 
I'll be live there around St. Patrick's Day um, as they start their St. Patrick's Day. So you could actually do both. So why don't you go to Disney Springs, have dinner and maybe a drink and some entertainment at um, uh, Raglan Road, get your your great Irish St. Patrick's Day, and then you can you can have a little nightcap and um, sing Sweet Caroline at Jelly Rolls. So. Um, I want to drink around the world at, with Becky Mankin that's on my bucket list. So, Chris, I'm going to tell you that's a bad idea for a lot of reasons. First of all, kids, drinking around the world never ends well for anybody involved. And when there's Viking hats and dinosaur costumes and sombreros and shirts with checkboxes, it, no good is going to come from that, I promise you. Also, drinking around the world with Becky is going to be... Living the scene from when Harry met Sally over and over and over and over, like Groundhog Day. You said what I'm saying again, because every kiosk she's going to go and she'll do it in Becky voice. I'd grab the puppet, but it's so far away. I want something sweet. Is it sweet enough? Can you make it sweeter? What color is it? Don't you know who I am? It, it's a bit of an ordeal. It's a lot of fun, I'm sure. But be careful what you wish for, um, I, because I'm sure there's other things um, that that should probably on, be on your bucket list before that. Um, let's see. Becky says, I'm back in April and I'll buy. Somebody please screenshot that. I'm assuming that you're talking to me, but we can do. Becky, I don't, we've never done Blue Zoo, have we? Of all the things that we've done, I don't think we've ever done Blue Zoo. Oh, my computer's running so slow it's it's time to get a new computer by the way speaking of getting a new computer um thanks to all of you who are members of the WWO nation if you're not a member i need a new computer because my main computer died and i'm actually running on an almost nine-year-old macbook air and the poor little guy is is struggling desperately um so yeah please join the WWE nation and help support the uh the ww radio new computer fund um Let's see. Good times ever seem so good. Um, what do you have against Terry Rex? I have nothing against Terry Rex. I mean, when she's walking up my front stairs, it's a little weird. But uh, <laughs> drinking around the world is why we can't have <laughs> is why we can't have nice things. It takes a lot to keep my sweet, sparkling personality fed. Somebody screenshot that too, because that's that's very, very. Um, t- I'm going to make that nice and big. So. There you go. Um, eating around the world, Debbie. Now you're talking. Eating around the world is much more my speed, especially with flower and garden coming up. Uh, Terry Simpson Doherty, I was talking today during the live broadcast, which I think I saw you there. Rick Springfield, girls' night. Are we gonna? Are we gonna? Because last year it was rainy and it was hot and schwitzy, but I would love to do Girls' Night at um, at Rick Springfield again. So that'll – we'll just ferry over after – or see? Marla Chan, that's the idea. So we'll go to a nice early dinner at Blue Zoo. We'll ferry over or mini uh, – Becky's going to probably want some sort of um, – other she'll need to get dropped off right at the American Gardens Theater. We'll figure that out somehow, but um, we'll go there. We'll head on over a little Rick Springfield. That's the way to do it. We'll see illuminations for um, one or two last times again. So, so we'll make that happen. So you girls put it all together and just let me know if I'm invited and then where to go. Well, oh, we have so much fun on Ladies Night. Oh yes, it's Ladies Night and the feelings right. Oh, yes, it's ladies' night. Oh, what a night. I almost started singing, but I caught myself because ain't nobody want to hear that. So uh, it's almost 8.30. It is almost 8.30. I still need to finish the show, by the way. In case you hadn't noticed, Becky, I do a podcast about Walt Disney World. It's supposed to come out on Monday. My guest couldn't record until Tuesday. Not till Tuesday like the band from the 80s, but he could not record until Tuesday. But it's a long show, it's a fun show, and I think it's a topic you are going to enjoy with a guest that you may or may not have heard and enjoyed in the past. I had a lot of fun with this one, so um, especially if you dig retro Walt Disney World. We're going to look back on uh, on some cool stuff, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, 
Let's see. Um, what else did I forget? What else did I forget? Um, Martin, so we won't do any 20 questions tonight because um, we do. I do have to get the show finished. I'll have some more recording that I need to do. And my voice is going because I've been doing nothing but talking all day. I think if you want to go, oh, Jessica Alice, shh, I don't like that idea at all. Um, do I have to, time to call at the end of the show? Uh, I would normally say no, Darlene, but if I can remember, I will try and make sure to double check. I pulled voicemails already, but if you want to try and get a last one in, I will try and remember uh, to do it. Becky says there is one. Count them one room left for Japan. You know you want to be there. Especially if we're talking about food, we are going to owe the way we will eat and the fun we will have in Japan. I, I cannot tell you of all the things that we have done and all the things that are coming up on the schedule. This is the one that is so very near and dear to my heart and my stomach. Also, we still have, I think Becky says we still have one, two cabins. So Becky, I think, are, are you saying those are, we still have two cabins at the opening day price for the New Orleans cruise? Cause then there's still additional cabins. People can still join the group even after. But if you, we only, only, only through the, the miracle of mouse fan travel, I believe Becky is saying, um, that is still the special day one pricing that we have for the cruise out of New Orleans next February. The food, uh, two balcony at opening day prices, only from Mouse Fan Travel can can those sort of miracles happen. Um, John Jones says, come on to New Orleans. Debbie Hartlett says, I got my cabin with lights a little hearts thing. Faye Edmondson can't wait for Japan. I saw, wait, let me go back. Let me go back. Vicky Guppy can't wait for Japan. So much fun. So, so much fun. And yes, I probably will wear a kimono at uh, at some point. So again, go to Mouse Fan Travel. You can find out more about either or both of those and then all the other good stuff that we have coming, Becky, that we haven't announced and that I haven't told you about that's on the board. There's a couple of new things that are on the board. Um, and if those of you who know why I didn't do a show last week, there is a super secret project in the works. So anywho, um, that is going to do it. I really do want to thank all the members of the nation for all of your love and support and your friendship. Um, it, you really do so very much, not just to help the show, but to really to foster that sense of community. I look forward to our next live video group call. So unlike this, where you just get to see me, we all get to see each other, which is even better. Oh, Carrie Zare is here. She can't wait. Oh, Carrie, we're going to have so much fun and food and fun and food and fun on New Orleans. Uh, again, if you have not joined the Box People group, what are you waiting for? It's free and it's fun. And every and somebody said this to me today, actually. I won't say who it was. They said, you know, I, I joined your group relatively recently, and I cannot tell you how impressed I am at just how friendly and welcoming everybody is there. There's no drama. There's no nonsense. There's no flaming. There's no every. And this person said to me, how do you do it? How do you keep that group so well behaved? And, so, and I'm like, it's not me. It's them. It's the people who are there. And that is very much a testament to you because if you've been members or seen conversations in, in sometimes other groups, Disney or otherwise, you know, people are people. And it you guys are, are remarkable. And no matter how many more people come into the family, because that's what you are, um, you continue to, to remain incredibly warm and welcoming to each and every one of those. And, and I think it's very much an extension of, of, of me and, and who we are and the way not just we want to treat other people, but the way we want to be treated. So thank you for that. And know that people, even new to the group, are, are very cognizant and very much recognize that. So um, what else? I told you I'm going to release um, the Momentum Retreat tickets this week, but you can still join me for our Momentum Weekend Workshop in Walt Disney World this September. It's only limited to 50 people. I'm also going to start to announce some of, I think I have our first keynote speaker lined up, and I might share that with you guys soon. And uh, I'm very excited for this person to come and share this 
person's story. And that's all that I'm going to give you. Um, I'm also going to have a couple of other announcements in terms of um, things that I have for you. And then maybe some way that you can come and help me. I'm also going to announce my Tuesday night, uh, my Tuesday. Well, this is it's appropriate, but not accurate. So uh, I actually have three spots for my Tuesday night mastermind group. It's not starting in August. That group is already full, but um, I do have a weekly mastermind group, which I'm going to um, probably start. We have a couple of people there. We're going to add a couple more people in the next month or so. So you can go to lumangelo.com to find out more or just shoot me an email and how I can help you out. You, my friend, help me every uh, single day, every single week. Um, Becky says, oh, the nation boxes you get at the whatever level, are so much fun. Reminds me, I need to share what was in my last one. Thank you. It sometimes gets very tough to figure out what to put in those boxes and get creative, but I think you're going to actually like some of the things I have planned. Um, it's interesting when I go into I went into a store very quickly. I went into a store the other day working on my super secret project and saw something that I hadn't seen in months. I literally took them all off the shelf, and the woman thought I was kidding. I'm like, no, I need this all for my family. None of that is a lie. I needed them all for my... So there's me walking out of a, a park to be unnamed as yet with these two gigantic bags of every last one they had on the shelf because it is one of the coolest things I have ever seen offered at a Disney park and I have not seen it in ages. So all of you at that level of the nation, that's what you're getting and I think you're going to dig it a lot. So with that... This is supposed to be a heart. I know kids don't do that anymore, but who cares? I took my first bubblegum wall picture today. I'm not sure how it came out, but I'm trying. I'm trying to be hip. It's hip to be square. I'm trying my best. Uh, Becky, you can always share whatever I send, unless I share something specifically for you. But yes, you can always. I encourage the nation people to share what they get. You. I'm talking to you. I freaking love you, man. Yeah, I said freaking. I freaking love you, and I appreciate you for listening, for watching, for sharing, for even just knowing that you are there. Um, it is what makes everything I do worthwhile and fun and so rewarding. If there's some way that I can help you, please, please, please let me know. And um, I will, will I be live at all again over the next couple of days. I don't know. Possibly. Maybe. Make sure you turn on notifications because you never know. Otherwise, I will see you next Wednesday. I love you guys. Have a good night. Thanks again. Share this out with your friends when you're done. Stay tuned for the show. It's coming out soon, like in an hour. I promise.